Okay, we're going to go to our second level of equations, and we're going to solve a linear equation with one variable using the multiplication property of equality. But before we start there, I want to make sure that you can see the difference between these two problems. This problem, the x is by himself, it's a 1x, and I'm simply moving the fraction like we did in the last video from one side to the other. So I would do my take away one third to clear, take away one third, x is by himself, and x equal two thirds take away one third is one third. So if the fraction, if you have a fraction in your problem, but it's not attached to the x, just move it like we did the decimals and like we did the whole numbers. Now, let's take a look at this. This is where we have not only a fraction, but a fractional x. Now, I want to solve, this says one third x equal nine. I want to solve for one single positive x. I'm not interested in what one third x is. I want to know what one whole x is. So using the multiplication property of equality and knowing what we know about reciprocals or multiplicative inverses, I'm going to multiply both sides by the reciprocal. So the reciprocal of three over one is, I mean one over three is three over one. I'm going to multiply. And what I do on one side, I must also do on the other side. So when you multiply this and play cross outs, three over three does cross out to one whole positive x. And on the right hand side, nine times three is 27. So one x is equal to 27. So each time you see a fractional x equal something, we're gonna multiply by the reciprocal. If it's positive, positive reciprocal. If it's negative, negative reciprocal. Because each time it will turn into a positive one x, which is what we want to happen. All right, let's try another one. Let's say that we have 2 fifths x equal 10. Okay, the fraction is 2 fifths, and I want to multiply both sides by the reciprocal. So the reciprocal of 2 fifths is 5 over 2. So I'm going to multiply by 5 over 2. And on this side, I'm going to multiply by 5 over 2. Since I'm using fractions, I'll just put a 1 underneath that 10. Well, when you cross multiply, those clear out, and those clear out. And so we are down to the positive 1x that we want. And then over here, we have, <clears throat> I like to take the shortcut, so I'll do 2 into 2 is 1, 2 into 10 is 5, 5 times 5 is 25. So x is equal to 25, okay? Let's try another. This time I'm going to give you a negative fraction. I'm going to give you a negative 2 fifths x equal 7. So the reciprocal on this is going to be a negative 5 over 2 to be multiplied by both sides. A negative 5 over 2 times 2 fifths, negative 2 fifths, and I'll put 7 over 1 times a negative 5 over 2. As you can see, this clears out. Two negatives make a positive, so we have 1x, and I'll multiply the top times the top and the bottom times the bottom. 7 times a negative 5 is a negative 35 over 2. <clears throat> Sometimes you will see in um, literature that they'll put the negative right smack dab on the, uh, even with the line. It just means that one of them is a negative. So I may put it on top, I may put it on bottom, or I may just put it smack dab in the middle. It still means one of them is a negative. Okay? All right, let's try this one. Uh, I'm going to do an x over 4 equal 3. Now, I really like to have my x off to the side because I'm having trouble seeing the fraction. Well, you know there's a 1 in front of that fraction. I mean, in front of that x. So, technically, that's a 1 fourth x. So, if you see an x or a y or a z on top of a number, there's a 1 there, unless they indicate otherwise. 
So just for cleanliness, I'm going to make it a 1 fourth x equal 3, because I, I want to see my fraction. Now I'm ready to multiply by the reciprocal, which is a 4 over 1. And over here, I will multiply by 4 over 1. This clears out to a positive 1x. And 3 times 4 is equal to 12. 1x, or x, equal 12. OK? Now this time, I'm going to do a negative x over 7 is equal to 10. I remember I like to see my fractions, so I'm going to do that, but I'm also going to rewrite it. I'm going to go a negative 1 7th x equal 10. Now, reciprocal is a negative 7 over 1. And I'm going to multiply over here a negative 7 over 1. This clears out to 1x. And 10 times a negative 7 in multiplication is a negative 70. That looks pretty good, don't you think? OK. All right, now let's try this one. Let's say that I have 2 sixth x plus 2 equal 10. Now I'm trying to fool you on here. Yes, I am going to multiply by the reciprocal 6 over 2. I am. But it seems to me that we need to isolate the variable, which means there's a number up here that needs to go to the other side before I do anything. And so we're, we're combining the addition property of equality and the multiplication property of equality. OK, 2, you got to go. So I'm going to take away 2. That clears. And negative 2 right there. So now I have 2 6x equal 8. Now we're back where we started. You can now flip or do the reciprocal, which will be a positive 6 over 2 and a multiply a positive 6 over 2. I like to play cross outs, make that a little smaller. So I'm going to go 2 into 2 is 1, 2 into 8 is 4, and 4 times 6 is 24. This clears out to 1x. 1x is equal to 24. Now that wasn't bad. We're still going to multiply by the reciprocal, but we've got to move numbers to the other side. And that's one of the things we have to look for when we're solving equations. OK, let's try another one. OK, let's say that I have, mm, I'm going to do a negative 4 plus 1 third x equal 6. OK? Now, you clearly see that we have a fractional x, and I am going to play reciprocal, but not till the negative 4 moves to the other side. And how does he move? By adding the opposite. So I'm going to do a plus 4, clear, and a plus 4. And we now have 1 third x equal 10. Now that it's set up and everybody's in its proper location, I can do my reciprocal. I can multiply 3 over 1. Over here, 3 over 1. This clears out to x or 1x. And 10 times 3 is 30. Nice and easy, isn't it? OK, let's try this one. I'm going to give you a 6 and a minus 1 7th x equal 8. Now, look what we got to do. We don't have any distribution. We don't have to combine like terms on the left and the right-hand side. We just need to isolate the variable. And 1 7th doesn't leave the x because he's attached. So let's tell the 6 to move. So I'm going to take away 6 to clear. And I'm going to take away 6. You have a negative 1 7th x equal. Now you have an 8 and a negative 6. If you take the difference, that's going to be a 2, but it's going to be a positive 2. All right, now sometimes people forget. When you do the reciprocal, you've got to keep the sign of the fraction. So let's multiply by a negative 7 over 1 and a negative 7 over 1. So this clears out to 1x. And 2 times a negative 7 is a negative 14. 1x equal a negative 14. That looks good. OK? Now. I'm going to give you my best one. This is the most difficult one of all. OK, here we go. I'm going to put x over 3 minus 1 third equal 4 fifths. 
that was mean of me, wasn't it, to put a, to put a fractional x and a fraction in the same problem. Okay, well, you know what we need to do? Same thing we just did. We need to tell the number that's on the same side as the fractional x to get to the other side. Okay, so let's do it. Negative one-third, you need to move. I'm going to add one-third to clear, and I'm going to add one-third. So, I think I better figure out what this is, then I'll come back over to this. It looks like four-fifths plus one-third, common denominator is 15. So five into 15 is three, and three times four is 12, and three into 15 is five, five times one is five. Okay, so look what we have now. We have a 17 over 15. 17 over 15. All right, now, here we go. We have one third x equal 17 over 15. Now, what are we going to do? Well, I think we're going to multiply by the reciprocal, aren't we? Okay, here we go. 3 over 1, and over here, we'll do a 3 over 1. I'm definitely going to play cross out here. 3 into 3 is 1, and 3 into 15 is 5. So what do I have now? I have, this crosses out, so I have x equal, looks like 17 over 5. And that is your answer, 17 over 5. You don't have to change it into a mixed number. Okay, so in this lesson, we have used the multiplication property, and we even stuck a little addition property of equality in there as well. Remember, when you solve an equation, that we need to combine any like terms and isolate the x by moving anything that's on the same side of the x to the other side, and then in this case, we can multiply by the reciprocal. If it's positive, keep it positive, and if it's negative, keep it negative. Thank you.